Anastasia, you say, what about the fact that quantum computers that can do Shor's algorithm are still so far away? You ask, what if quantum computing never becomes a viable technology? What are you going to do with your life? Why are you so excited about this field? Well, quantum computing has become way more popular in the last five years, due in part to all these cloud quantum systems, but research has been going on in it for a very long time. Now, I've been studying the field for 12 years, and these are the top five reasons that I love quantum computing. Number one, innovation. Being here at the beginning of the quantum computing revolution makes me feel like I'm getting a throwback to the very beginning of Silicon Valley. The labs, the equipment, I mean, they don't look exactly like the set pieces and devs or the quantum tunnel in Ant-Man, but there's something so inspiring about walking into the lab. The anti-static floors, the clean rooms, the electronics, all at once looking really futuristic and like it's gonna fall apart any second. It's just so cool to be truly connected to the hardware layer and understand that core functionality of the quantum processors. Now, quantum computers won't replace classical computers. You should think of them more like the GPUs in your computer. The GPU is optimally designed for displaying 3D graphics, so it's much better for intensive video games than doing spreadsheets. But just because GPUs didn't replace CPUs and just complemented them, does that mean they're not important? Of course not. GPUs have exploded in usage. We use GPU-enabled technologies every day. GPUs are helping with things like cancer research because they're a core component of deep learning and artificial intelligence. Sure, we're probably going through some overhype, but that's what happens when you're growing a new technology with such speed. There's uncertainty about what we can do with quantum computing in the future of the field, but the potential has made so many people excited and want to be part of the quantum revolution. Number two, collaboration. Now, science has always been about collaboration, but for a very long time, if you're in a quantum computing lab, you're collaborating with other physicists in the field. Now, with quantum computing coming out of the lab, there's a lot of collaboration going on with a lot of different fields. I absolutely love talking about quantum computing to people outside the field. First, quantum computing companies need to scale their technology, so quantum computing companies do not only have physicists. Physicists are just one part of the company. There are mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, fabrication engineers, all working on different parts of the hardware. Computer scientists are working on quantum programming languages, on the middleware, on infrastructure. Mathematicians are working on computational complexity and error correction along with physicists. And of course, there's a lot of other people, technical and non-technical, that make a quantum computing company run. Also, now the field is starting to do customer discovery and figure out what problems we can actually solve with quantum computers in the real world. I get to talk to people in the medical field and in chemistry about how quantum computers can potentially simulate new molecules or even develop new medicines. I get to talk to aerospace companies Lockheed Martin has purchased a D-Wave quantum computer, and Northrop Grumman has had a quantum research group for many years. NASA is looking into quantum sensor technology and physics-based transfer learning. So what kind of problems are aerospace companies interested in? Airbus thinks that quantum computing can have a huge impact on flight physics. They launched a quantum computing competition last year to attack problems like aircraft climb optimization, wing box design, and fluid dynamics. Financial companies are early adopters and are always embracing new technology. JP Morgan has hired some of the best innovators and physicists to work on quantum computing problems for financial applications. Even noisy intermediate scale devices with just 100 qubits could be useful for these sorts of problems. Banks are also exploring using quantum random number generators for creating truly random numbers for public key infrastructure, or using quantum key encryption to make their data even more secure. Quantum physicists, quantum computer scientists, quantum engineers, we get to work with so many different companies and people and learn from each other. Like quantum machine learning, you get to mix both quantum technologies and classical machine learning. That growth and being inspired and getting to work with so many different people makes it an amazing time to join into the field. There's still so much to explore. Number three, learning a wide variety of skills. I always said the best thing about learning physics is that it teaches you to think and how to learn things really quickly. The pillars of physics, classical, quantum, thermal, and electromagnetism, give you a framework with which to view the world. Quantum computing is in its infancy, so there's just a lot to do. And because of that, you're going to get exposed to a lot of different things. Because of all this, let's imagine a world where one day quantum computing isn't a thing. I don't think I or any other physicist will really be in trouble. I think by studying quantum computing and picking up all the skills, especially at this really exciting time, we can take those skills and apply them to any other cutting edge technology. And this channel is kind of gonna be a reflection of that. It's my documentation of learning all these cutting new technologies and applying them to different fields. I hope this documentation builds an inspiration for a better future, either through quantum, AI, clean energy, or something completely different. Number four, every day is really different and exciting. 
I've been involved in the quantum field for over 12 years now, so I've done a lot, both in and out of quantum computing. I've worked with both neutral atoms and superconducting qubits. I've done software engineering. I've done education and pedagogy research. And this is especially the case for me because I've always worked at startups, but every day is so different. It also seems like every week there's new cool research in quantum computing coming out. This is what my days can look like, and understand some of these days were more likely to happen when I was an undergrad versus grad school versus pre-pandemic versus post-pandemic, but any day could be spent doing any of these things. I stare at code a lot. Some days I'm exploring a new quantum platform or learning a new quantum programming language or building software in Python or Golang. Sometimes I'm speaking at and attending conferences with other computer scientists and physicists in very far away places. So last year I got to go to Japan, I got to go to Switzerland, and I met some amazing people. From this, I can find new collaborators and make new friends. Because quantum computing is so small, we're a pretty tight-knit group. Sometimes physicists have to work with hardware, and that may mean soldering or being in the machine shop or playing with FPGAs. Over the years, I've built robots, worked with water jets, worked with specialized glass blowers for experiments. And the electric shop and the machine shop are my happy places. Another thing to do is taking classes and reading papers. I don't think it's possible anymore to keep up with every quantum computing paper that comes out in the field. I'm always taking a new course, whether it's in computer architecture or technical writing or something completely for fun. Number five, impact. Now, I can't predict the future of quantum computing what new algorithms we'll find, or how fast we'll reach milestones. But I do know that if we reach these goals, there'll be a huge impact across a lot of industries. For example, a quantum computer could possibly simulate new structures and use that to find new materials. If quantum computing can affect material science, that will ripple and have effects in every other industry. There's been a lot of hype the last few years about quantum computing, its capabilities, the current state of the field, and how fast and big the revolution will be. But commercialization of quantum computing is just beginning. One of my favorite, very old video games has this quote that I love. I'm going to read it to you. The popular stereotype of a researcher is that of the skeptic and a pessimist. Nothing could be further from the truth. Scientists must be optimists at heart in order to block out the incessant chorus of those who say it cannot be done. I do believe in human ingenuity and that quantum computing will have an impact on the world. I love that studying quantum physics has helped me learn so much about math, science, engineering, and computing. I've picked up skills over the years in building electronics, building software in multiple programming languages from web apps to data analysis. I've done deep learning and machine learning, I've worked with robots, and I've studied computing ethics. That's why I'm excited about quantum technology, and if you are too, you should subscribe to this channel and build that future with me.